What is the single biggest dick move in all of history? The original white elephant gifting from the king of Siam. This person would give this royal gift to people he found irritating and be entertained by the recipient's failing efforts to upkeep such an animal. Why don't they just give it away you ask? Back in the day, receiving a gift and giving it away was perceived as an insult. Go figure. And giving away a gift from a neighboring kingdom is, well, that much bigger of an insult. So no dice. Economies apparently have failed in order to upkeep a royal gift like this. Honestly, demove king of Siam. Edit, I'm seeing some comments about giving away the elephant, killing it, or letting it die so I'm going to clarify something. If you are given a gift, out of respect you take care of that gift because failing to do so would be taken as an insult from the gifting party. The king of Siam knew this and, for his pleasure, gave his opposing neighbors this annoyance of an animal, an ultimatum. Either fulfill the upkeep of this economy sucking, worthless elephant or I come invade your kingdom and slaughter you and your people. Being as powerful as he seemed to be, he probably sent delegations to these provinces to ensure the elephant was still around for years to come. LPT, keep that elephant alive. For those who don't know, a white elephant is rare and sacred. They were never used for work or war and were just comfortably maintained for their lifetimes at huge expense. So the story goes that there's this people in southern Iraq whose agriculture, economy and way of living were built around them living within the swamps. They were not very fond of Saddam Hussein and his regime and did a protest march towards Baghdad. So meanwhile they moved towards the capital, Saddam took some excavators and drained the whole swamp. Problem solved. Now nah, well salute this is why I am always kind of wary when I see dictators orthocrats and the likes depicted in the media as dumb or whatnot because you simply just don't rise to those levels of absolute power without being a sneaky backstabbing bastard, are they pose garbage? Yes but they are also way smarter than it looks from the outside and they know exactly what they are doing and we should not underestimate them in any way. Edit, wow. So this is how it feels when people actually read your comments and you get to have their intelligent opinion. Thanks you to everyone who responded and I tried to address every point. I just want to add that I am in no way an expert in this so it's just my opinion which could be uninformed. I guess what I was trying to say is I am legit worried about some states, especially the CCP, and now I am officially on one of their lists on Mayo, and it bugs me when I see them taken legally or when literally nobody from the international community react when they pull some outrageous s. Thomas Midgley invented Freon and putting lead into gasoline. He knew that putting lead into gasoline was a D move and he did it anyway for money. He knew because he got lead poisoning himself and still lied about its effects on people. Environmental historians have said that he has had the single largest impact on the Earth's atmosphere of any single organism in the history of the planet. Not to mention that lead levels directly correspond to lower cognitive abilities in the general population and you can look up the dates to know who would have been affected. This also has to be a story of poetic justice. He had also inverted a system of levers and pulleys to help him move around in bed after he become bedridden and his own invention strangled him in his sleep. I always thought the Fed putting Andrew Jackson on the $20 felt like a big fuck you since he hated the idea of a centralized bank. More than 33 children. More than 136 children. Before 1965 Indonesian government sent academicians, especially STEM graduates to study in Eastern Europe. After the supposed communist uprising in the 30th of September 1965 the government revoked their citizenship and declared them stateless. They risked persecution and possible torture and murder if they insist on returning. These nuclear physicist, master engineer, and PhD graduates take menial jobs, becoming janitors and wait tables to carry on living with virtually no possibility of return to their country. P.S. I'm adding some reading to anyone who are interested. https colon slash slash, new narrative. 
Com journalism lost homeland Indonesia's exile story https colon slash slash www. Vice. Com N article NE 7 QD 7 slash experts in exile how Indonesia lost an entire generation of intellectuals https colon slash slash medium. Com at Fmzunker I went on a date with 79 year old Indonesian exile in Prague C 689 at 81 of 49 edit, grammar plus reading material. Wait, the Indonesian government revoked their citizenship? Why? Take my power when the Mexican government rounded up thousands of Yaqui natives, made them walk over 300 kilometers to the coast, put them on boats, and sold them as slaves for about 25 cents. Most ended up on plantations in Veracruz where they were worked to death. Slavery was already illegal in Mexico at the time. When was this? That lady who stole the unborn baby out the other lady. The psycho bee that pretended to sell baby clothes to lure a pregnant lady in and then cut her baby out and leave her to go to the hospital, all just to cover up the ongoing lie to her family that she was pregnant and just suddenly had a miscarriage? Yo I live a couple streets from where that s went down. Craziest s I've ever had the misfortune of reading into. Dino Lane here's a somewhat recent article on it. Work shall set you free on the gates to Auschwitz. Edit, thank you for the award. I think every camp had such slogans over the entrance. Disgusting. Around the formation of the Persian Empire, Herodotus tells the story how King Astyages, the last king of Media, had a dream that his daughter would give birth to a king who would overthrow him. So he orders his general Harpagus to kill the child at birth. Harpagus doesn't want to kill the baby spill royal blood, so he gives the child, Cyrus, to a shepherd to raise. Ten years later Cyrus is discovered alive. King Astyages fakes being happy that the kid is alive, suggesting he always regretted issuing that order. To celebrate he plans a feast and tells Harpagus to send his son over to play with Cyrus. During the banquet, King Astyages has the son of Harpagus killed, cooked, and fed to Harpagus. When the act was revealed, it is said that Harpagus did not react other than to gather the pieces of his son and remove them for burial. Harpagus bides his time. Much later, Cyrus is gathering forces against King Astyages. Astyages orders Harpagus, as his primary general, to lead the army against Cyrus. After a three-day battle, Harpagus took his revenge for the death of his son by turning on the battlefield in favor of Cyrus, resulting in Astyages' defeat and the formation of the Persian Empire. Compulsory edit, my first award, thanks kind stranger. Wow I feel like you wouldn't want to leave someone as your general whose son you fed to them. Those Mathefrikers evolved into suck mammal blood and now we got to worry about mosquitoes, leeches, ticks, etc. If you didn't want parasites eating your blood, why did you keep all your nutrients in it? Silly mammals. Well not really relevant but when 50 Cent bought the first 4 rows of a Ja Rule concert, and Ja had to perform in front of 4 empty rows. LOL. Or when 50 Cent bet Floyd Mayweather to read a page of a Harry Potter book and exposed Floyd's illiteracy to everyone LOL. Today I learned France asking Haiti for a compensation after Haiti overthrew the colonial administration. It took 143 years for Haiti to pay off that debt. Why would Haiti not just tell them to frick off? Brutus pretending to be Caesar's best friend and then literally stabbing him in the back. Caesar, really? In front of my salad? Putting your fishing boats to the coast of other countries because you already fished everything in your country's surrounding sea. It's horrible, it's happening all over right now. Chinese boats are sitting on the edge of the protected Galapagos waters catching everything they can and have been caught multiple times fishing in protected waters. Edit, spelling. Ray Kroc stealing McDonald's out from under the brothers and not even paying them royalties. Dude I watched the founder on Netflix and it's straight up cruel how he just took everything from the brothers, divorced his wife and took another guy's wife, 
and then proceeded to be an a-hole while expanding the business and getting filthy rich. It was shocking how little he seemed to care about the consequences of his actions so long as he was making money. Russia telling Ukraine to give up their nukes for peaceful independence only for Russia to take back Crimea a couple decades later. Yup. Now when any rogue state wants nuclear weapons I understand completely. Mind blown that woman scorned who killed freaking everybody. Hang about till I google it. Saint Olga of Kiev after her husband, the prince, was tortured and murdered by dissidents, Drevlian, she got vengeance by. Buried alive the first messengers burnt boiled alive the second set of messengers. Had a funeral feast for her late husband which included Drevlians and then had 5000 of them killed. After a year long siege, Olga said give me three pigeons. And three sparrows from each house. The Drevlians rejoiced at the prospect of the siege ending for so small a price, and did as she asked. Olga then instructed her army to attach a piece of sulfur bound with small pieces of cloth to each bird. At nightfall, Olga told her soldiers to set the pieces aflame and release the birds. They returned to their nests within the city, which subsequently set the city ablaze. There was not a house that was not consumed, and it was impossible to extinguish the flames, because all the houses caught fire at once. As the people fled the burning city, Olga ordered her soldiers to catch them, killing some of them and giving the others as slaves to her followers. She left the remnant to pay tribute. It's a fine line between total D move and bad A on this one. Percent 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 edit, while this blew up. Went to sleep and 22k up votes later. I read through every direct reply and about 50% said demove and 50% said badass. A whole slab want the Netflix show Game of Thrones spin off. Many pointed out it's possibly not true. And finally, this to to that you pair as Sathiam is on topic and totally sweet. You forgot the reason she did this, a neighboring king killed her husband and ordered her to marry him and give her kingdom over. She didn't take it kindly. Live. Opium wars were pretty dish. You don't wanna buy hard drugs from us and turn your population into useless addicts? Fine, we'll invade you and bombard your cities until you start buying. As this legend said, the British were furious that the Chinese could tell the British what to do in China. The burning of the Library of Alexandria. Romans fight a battle far enough away from a place not to burn it also Romans, so you know that far away place we couldn't possibly hit on accident? Firestart said it, um. I was making a joke after a long day but. Thank you. I. I guess. To the people that kind heartedly try teaching me something at least. Please don't fight over this, 8 piece. Keep calm your pet leaving your room after you carried them in. Your pet moving away from you after you sit close to them. Party train probably when they relocated Rasputin's shlong from his body to that jar. After Rasputin was killed by angry nobles, his penis was allegedly discovered son body by a maid, who preserved the 13 inch monster for posterity. From there, it was obtained by a group of Russian women living in Paris who, due to Rasputin's reputation as a mystic and revered lover, treated it as sacred. Reportedly, it was kept in a wooden casket and bits were broken off for disciples. This apparently continued until Rasputin's real-life daughter demanded they turn over her daddy's D. After her death in 1977, the penis eventually turned up again in 1994, at which point it was discovered to actually be a sea cucumber. I'll be deleting my search history now, but I found this here. Russian army pushing Hitler back across Europe. Get to the outskirts of Warsaw and broadcast in Polish to have all the men in the city join the fight. Cue large uprising. Russia holds back until all the men in the city are killed, so there's nobody left to resist when they occupy, and then resume pushing Hitler back across Europe. Edit sources requested https colon slash slash en m wikipedia org wiki warsaw uprising
Worth noting that Americans offered to help the uprising by bombing German positions. The idea was they'd send bombers from northern southern Italy, but they'd have to land in Soviet territory to refuel. Stalin didn't authorize this, so there were no bombers. Edit, eventually, one supply drop was authorized. Another one of these is the liberation of Lvov, done by Polish Home Army, who afterwards disarmed when the, supposedly allied, Red Army rolled in, upon which the Poles were sent to gulags. The Japanese believed it would have been dishonorable to surprise attack an unexpecting enemy, so they sent a declaration of war to the US 30 minutes before the Pearl Harbor attack. However, the upper military brass delayed that message until 20 minutes after the attack had begun. Dick moved to both sides of the conflict there. Edit, I meant the Japanese upper brass delayed the message, not the US one. The US was caught completely off guard as they were expecting sabotage, not a full-scale offensive. If I remember correctly, upon their return, many of the Japanese pilots were horrified to learn that that the Americans had no idea they were coming and were under the impression that war would have already been declared. It was considered dishonorable. Trojan horse. I'll drink to that that was a big D move. But I think OP is asking about big D moves. When a British officer was talking to Robert Surkauf, he said we British fight for honor, you French fight only for gain. To which Surkauf replied saying you are quite right, each fights for that which he does not possess. Edit, it was Surkauf who originally roasted an English captain with this one. It wasn't Napoleon who originally said it, merely paraphrased. Edit 2, removed Napoleon and Russian. Is this true? Because Sir Kalf said, when a British captive officer taunted Sir Kalf with the words you French fight for money while we fight for honor, Sir Kalf replied each of us fights for what he lacks most. Making the woman who had her labia melted together due to McDonald's not wanting give people refills, look like a thieving bee because she was in the right and only wanted her medical bills paid. Edit. Thank you for the award, kind stranger. Every time this gets brought up I always tell people you know, the photos of her injuries are available out there, why don't you go look at them? Holy S is usually the response to that. Late, but forcing Alan Turing to take hormones to cure his homorexuality. That's dickish in general, but especially after all his help in cracking intercepted messages during World War II and help the Allies defeat the Nazis. I'd argue everything we do to cure homorexuality is awful, especially since there is nothing to cure. Also, I'm pretty sure the hormones lead to his suicide and I know that trying to cure homorexuality leads to a higher suicide rate in the LGBTQA plus community. Lastly, every form of discrimination against the LGBTQA plus community is terrible. You can love whoever you want, so long as they can consent. Having different measurement system across the world. And also different types of sockets. I have a better one, after the war, one city in Japan bought an electrical power plant from one country, and another city bought a different plant from a different country. The thing is the two plants put out different voltages. And to this day Japan has two different systems and the electrical appliances aren't compatible. And they had three for a short time. A company was then chosen by the battalion's commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel John Dutton Frost, to lead the 2nd Parachute Battalion in the Battle of Arnhem, part of Operation Market Garden, because of Digby's reputation of being an aggressive commander. In preparation Digby, concerned about the unreliability of radios, educated his men on how to use bugle calls that had been used during the Napoleonic Wars for communication in case the radios failed. He also took an umbrella with his kit as a means of identification because he had trouble remembering passwords and felt that anyone who saw him with it would think that only a bloody fool of an Englishman would carry an umbrella into battle. A company were dropped away from the target of Arnhem Bridge and had to go through Arnhem where the streets were blocked by German forces. Digby led his men through the back gardens of nearby houses instead of attempting to advance through the streets and thus avoided the Germans. 
Digby and a company managed to travel 8 miles in 7 hours while also taking prison 150 German soldiers including members of the SS. During the battle, Digby wore his red berry instead of a helmet and waved his umbrella while walking about the defenses despite heavy mortar fire. When the Germans started using tanks to cross the bridge, Digby led a bayonet charge against them wearing a bowler hat. He later disabled a German armored car with his umbrella, incapacitating the driver by shoving the umbrella through the car's observational slit and poking the driver in the eye. Digby then noticed the chaplain pinned down by enemy fire while trying to cross the street to get to injured soldiers. Digby got to him and said don't worry about the bullets, I've got an umbrella. He then escorted the chaplain across the street under his umbrella. When he returned to the front line, one of his fellow officers said about his umbrella that that thing won't do you any good, to which Digby replied oh my goodness Pat, but what if it rains? Digby was later injured by shrapnel, which also cut open the rear of his trousers but continued to fight until the company had run out of ammunition. Despite the radios being unreliable as Digby had predicted and the bugle calls being used most in the battle, the message out of ammo, God save the king was radioed out before Digby was captured. TL, DR, a bloody fool of an Englishman carries an umbrella into battle, because only he would, takes 150 German soldiers, some of whom belong to the SS, hostage, plays chicken with the artillery using a aforementioned umbrella, single-handedly takes out the cavalry with only umbrella, rescues Pat with umbrella, because oh my goodness, what if it rains, takes shrapnel in the ass, but isn't even phased, runs out of ammo, god save the king. That guy had the biggest D in history, bar none. Source. But wait, there's more. After capture, because of his injury, Digby was sent to St. Elizabeth's Hospital but escaped out of a window with his second-in-command Captain Tony Frank, when the German nurses had left them alone. After creating an escape compass from buttons on his uniform, Digby and Frank headed towards Marienville. They then met Menno Dino of the Dutch resistance who gave them a bicycle. Digby used the bicycle to visit fellow soldiers in hiding and the Germans did not recognize him despite him helping to push a Nazi staff car out of a ditch and German soldiers being billeted in the same house that he was staying in. Digby then gathered 150 escaped soldiers to head towards the front line. Digby and the soldiers cycled to the Rhine and joined up with British forces. The repatriation of Eastern European pilots who fought for the RAF during the Battle of Britain. Straight into Stalin's tender grasp. The way the Allies treated Poland after the wars after all they had done was horrendous. They had to first deal with Hitler wanting to exterminate them and then the Allies left them to the whims of the Soviet Union. IDK man, the holocaust seemed pretty bad. ISIS and or whatever Muslim or Asian group in power, going through ancient temples and destroying millennia old statues and works of art simply because they represent a different philosophy. The thought of destroying some 2000 year old statue just because I don't believe in their philosophy is beyond criminal to me, it is a crime against all of humanity. I mean, who the frick are you to think you are so important you can destroy something so valuable? Angkor Wat was built in the 800s and the Khmer Rouge recently cut the heads off of all the Buddhist statues. Such a shame, it's a beautiful ruins. Alliance helping Poland during World War II. In terms of deaths, several seemingly simple events triggered World War I. That's 40m deaths that a sandwich sale or an auto mechanic, or even a grandma could have averted. Many world leaders were related, and several said if their grandmother was still alive she would have put a stop to it before it spread. Comma World War 1 lead to World War 2. China's Great Leap Forward had about 30m direct deaths and another 20m or so indirect deaths. On smaller scales, history is littered with betrayal and intrigue. Who knows what treasures were lost, and what discoveries and inventions we don't have because of them. Do we not have flying cars and hoverboards due to some greedy jerk? Was world peace and global lives of ease lost because somebody made a D move? We may never know. 
Several said if their grandmother was still alive she would have put a stop to it before it spread grandma was Queen Victoria, so probably yes. Kaiser Wilhelm was particularly terrified of her, so a stern letter from her would have almost certainly stopped the whole shell. Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution Basically Mao's return to power after the failure of the Great Leap Forward and an opportunity to purge political rivals. The Cultural Revolution is estimated to have killed another 20 million, on top of the 30 million from the famine that followed the Great Leap Forward. Yeah, but after that nothing bad ever happened in China, they're absolutely perfect. Hitler killing Hitler and thus not giving everyone else the satisfaction of doing so. Probably doesn't qualify as biggest D-move per se, but certainly a D-move. After the successful invasion of France in World War II, Hitler forced the French to sign the surrender document with Germany in the exact same railway car that Imperial German representatives had signed the armistice of World War I. In the exact same spot. By then a museum piece, the train car was specifically moved back to that spot for this purpose. Near the end of World War II, the SS destroyed the railway car presumably to prevent the Allies from making Germany sign yet another surrender document in it. Not the biggest but that chimpanzee that used the frog as a flashlight was a bit of an a-hole. Watson and Crick using Rosalind Franklin's work but not even mentioning her name in the final work because she was a woman. She also couldn't get the Nobel Prize award. Science is full of DS. Martin Shkreli raising the price of that one drug from $13. 50 a tablet to $750 a tablet. Then buying the Wu-Tang Clan album. Andrew Jackson disregarding the Supreme Court and starting the Trail of Tears. Adding on to this, the US Gov signing treaty after treaty with native tribes and breaking every single one of them. That time a fish evolved legs and crawled out of the ocean. Things just went downhill from there. And so the problem remained, lots of the people were mean, and most of them were miserable, even the ones with digital watches. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd all made a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place. And some suggested that even the trees had been a bad move, and that no one should ever have left the oceans. Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Edit Typo. In the beginning was the creation of the universe. This has made a lot of people angry, and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Apostrophe. Having an overseas girlfriend, haven't been able to meet for 8 months, being desperate to be reunited during corona only to find out to see her getting engaged with another dude at it, thanks all for the support and thanks for the rewards. As you might suspect, I'm absolutely devastated by this but I'll also get over it in time. Bruh. Nestle. Those goddamn Mongolians. Always tear down my sty wall. Making a free to play game in the app store but making it so you have to buy things to be able to continue the game. You forgot the part where they make it playable at the beginning but slowly increase waiting times to make people addicted to it. Hitler invading Czechoslovakia. No mark. I only told you for a laugh. You promise not to tell. Hitler promised not to invade Czechoslovakia, Jeremy. Welcome to the real world. Apostrophe. Typhoid Mary was a D. She had to wash her hands and could have kept cooking, instead she runs away to took without washing her hands elsewhere. My cousin peeled all the wrappers off of tins in our kitchen so we didn't know what was inside. My fricus cat was on the couch this morning so I went to cuddle with him and the a-hole tries to leave as soon as I get there. I will always remember the insult my fricus cat. You made me laugh. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, and right when Isaac was begging for his life and his dad was about to drive a knife into his chest, God said psych. I got you good bro, kill that ram over there instead. Apostrophe. This always bothered me when I was learning about religion. 
I have a hard time totally respecting someone who asks a man to kill his own son. My girlfriend's a florist and she just told me a small wedding she did the flowers for cancelled last second because the entire groom's family didn't show up. IDK that's the biggest D move in all of history, but damn that's pretty D. When Nani tried to steal Cristiano Ronaldo's goal and got it ruled out for offside. It's hilarious even if you don't like football, soccer. Make sure you watch the second angle, 035, so you can see just how bad this was. WTFY? Why would you steal a goal that was pretty much in the goddamn net? King Leopold II. Fuuuuk him. I was waiting for this one. Fuuuuk him. Alan Turing was a British mathematician who solved the German code language and effectively ended the war. But he was a homerixel, so he got no credit. He was chemically castrated by the British government and killed himself alone in his apartment. There are all kinds of stories like this. One time a gay man saved US President Gerald Ford from being shot in the 70s. Literally wrestled the gun away from a woman. His name was Oliver Sipple. If he was striked, everyone would know his name. He'd have become a superstar. He was a freaking former marine. How much more of an American hero can you be? But the media caught wind that he frequented gay bars and outed him. Like many gay men in the 70s, Sipple was in the closet. His mother learned about his exulity in the news and then disowned him. President Ford made sure to not invite him to the White House or publicly praise him, instead sending him a four-sentence letter thanking him. Luckily there is a happy ending to that one though. Sipple got 15 million dollars from the San Francisco Chronicle for outing him as gay in a huge legal case. Prince Albert actually moving his supposedly massive D inside Queen Victoria. He basically fathered a bloodline that caused every bit of upset in the early 20th century. If it wasn't for his massive D moving there would have been no first world war. Is that why they put him in a can? Genghis Khan in both senses of the word. This was the biggest DI move I found in my family history. My great 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 grandpa came to the United States alone. Said he would make some money and then send for his wife and kids. He did send the money. But to his wife's dismay, upon arrival she'd found the doucher bag ghosted her at the last moment. A few months later found out he'd moved to a neighboring town and had another family. My great grandfather came to states, married my great grandmother, had five children was deported for various organized crimes back to Sicily, had five children with another woman naming them all the same names of his children stateside. So my grandmother, Josephine, had a half-sister named Josephine and so on. He came back to US and was eventually deported again. When my buddy Trevor ate my donna that he claimed was his when I know for a fact he ate his because I was right there when we got them delivered and he ate his right away. Trevor, that was a D-move, man. Philip of Macedonia threatened the Spartans if I invade Laconia, you will be destroyed and never rise again the Spartans replied with if. It's worth pointing out that by that point, Sparta was heavily in decline and frankly not worth his time invading. For all of the Spartan reputation, they were really quite mediocre in the grand scheme of warfare. Their success rate in battles was about 50%, their tactics were nothing special, and their infamous agoge only resulted in men who were crueler and more ruthless, not better soldiers. Their ability to use supply lines was awful, their understanding of greater politics and thus the ability to achieve strategic goals as a nation was awful, their system of government meant that a very small and corrupt elite made all the decisions, pretty much solely towards maintaining their own status. Their society was built upon brutally oppressing 85% of their own population, to a degree that the rest of Greece, who were totally cool with slavery, were disturbed by the Spartan cruelty, and their social structures had zero mechanisms for social climbing from their middle class. This blog goes through the finer details of how overhyped Sparta is. https colon slash slash www. 
Pink News. Company. Uck 200603. 2-4 man throws his own penis at police dude cut his D off and threw it at a cop. The reasons behind the trail of tears, an integrated Native American tribe got kicked to the boonies, appealed the Supreme Court won, and still got genocided. Attacking the Russian forces at Osawik to the point where they had to use zombies. Leaving your shopping cart anywhere but the cart drop off. I'm in a boot with a broken big toe and busted ribs from a motorcycle crash a couple weeks ago and I can still put the carts away. People have no excuse, they're just lazy. The ancient Greeks mobbed down voting Socrates for not agreeing with a hiver mind. He was either going to be banished from the subreddit or drink poison. Also when Athens mob down voted Themistocles, dude who saved them from Persia, so hard that he ended up going to work in Persia. Apple removing the headphone jack. The Columbine and Sandy Hook shooters. Fuck those guys. And the one in Jonesboro, Arkansas where the murderers pretty much got away with it. France forcing Haiti to pay reparations for over 100 years until the 1950s for the losses incurred by their colonial slave owners when Haiti declared independence in the 1830s. This crippled their economy, forcing them to waste a century of trade surplus that could have been used to develop their nation. They continue to be one of the poorest countries in the world, and so far France still has yet to give much back. That time the US gave Japan a white flag so they could easily surrender context. In 1853 the United States sent Commodore Perry to Japan to negotiate the opening of Japan's ports to western trade. According to Ways of the World by Robert W. Strayer, Perry presented his reluctant hosts with, among other gifts, a white flag for surrender should hostilities follow. The Munich Conference. Like oh my god what a s show and did he move on both sides. Basically in 1938, Germany wanted to get a piece of land from Zechislavkia lands which were populated with ethnic Germans. So to appease Hitler and Germany and avoid another war, the western powers, France and Britain agreed for a conference. Now you think Zechislavkia would be involved in the conference but nah, the western powers and Germany Italy were the only parties dickassing it and agreed to Hitler's terms that Germany would get the lands they asked for. Not only this was a huge demove but Neville Chamberlain had the audacity to state that the signing of the agreement that conference would be peace for our time. Oh and the best part, six months later after the agreement was signed. Hitler occupies the rest of Zechislavkia and isn't liberated until the end of the war following a coup d'etat which would turn them into a communist country in 1948. People normally talk how Poland is basically the punching bag but at least you can say the Poles went down fighting, the Czechoslovaks however, were completely blindsided and fricked right from the start by Hitler's ambitions and betrayal of the western powers. My dog coming to my chair for a treat, getting one, farting, then leaving. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.